These animations of trains are captivating. With just a slight movement of the rail track, the train can change its trajectory. This clever track switching design is achieved with a simple trick on the wheel and track. Let's take a closer look at how it works. First, let's focus on a single track. Now, assume there is one branch diversion for the track. Will the wheel roll through the left or right track? The wheel's journey is unpredictable. The wheels used on the rails have a flange on one side. The flange is a safety feature of the wheel that ensures the wheel never leaves the track. Throughout this video, always remember this simple rule. Due to the presence of the flange, it is impossible for the wheel to travel through the left track. If you want to make the wheel roll through the left track, just make the right track a separate piece and bend it as shown before the wheel reaches that point. This is the fundamental concept behind track switching. Now, let's see how this works in action when both pairs of the tracks are present. The flange is always on the inner side of the wheels. The portion of the track that is able to bend is called a tongue track. Quite a fitting name, right? When the tongue tracks are bent as shown, the train will move on the yellow track. Remember, due to the presence of the flange, the left wheel cannot roll on the light blue track. Due to the same bending, the dark blue tongue is not at all touching the track. A large gap can be observed. So, the right wheel will also be able to follow the yellow track on that side without any trouble. Let's bend the tongue tracks in the opposite way. This time, a gap is created at the orange tongue region. In turn, the train will easily adopt the blue tracks and move straight. What a simple and effective mechanism! The length of the moving part of the tongue tracks do not need to be so lengthy. You can reduce the length of the tongues by pivoting them like this. We will explain the advantage of this short length towards the end of this video. Using this mechanism, the switching action happens perfectly. However, if you run your train on these tracks, it will inevitably derail. The issue is the crossing. The tongue tracks cross at a point. If the crossing design is like this, the train is going to hit the orange tongue and derail. Let's see how to overcome this issue. To overcome this issue, just provide a gap near this crossing in both the rails. In this new crossing design, whether the train is going through the left or right track, the wheels cross the junction without hitting any track. So in this new design, the train can switch the tracks and also cross the junction without any trouble. Here is a small design challenge for you. Let's watch the rail wheel movement in slow motion at the crossing area. You can see that the wheels are going to drop down in this gap. Can you suggest a solution for this issue? We can overcome this issue just by increasing the length of the tongue rails as shown. They will provide good support to wheels during the movement over the rail gaps. Have you noticed two additional pieces of the rail tracks near the crossing? They are called check rails and they have an important duty during the crossing. Majority of the tracks use a larger radius for the turn. This is done so the train can change its journey at high speeds smoothly. Here is the issue. For a high radius or low angle deviation track design like this, there is a high possibility for the wheel to travel on the wing rail and the train will derail. The check rails are placed with a fixed gap with the main rails on either sides. Even if the wheel tries to travel on the wing rail, the check rail wheel will prevent this. This will channelize the wheels to the track properly and the wheels will easily pass through the intended trajectory. Now let's understand the importance of a shorter tongue track. 
This is, in fact, considered a design optimization. Can you predict the maximum stress points in these switching rails? It is at the toe of the rail switch and the nose of the crossing. These components are very often replaced due to wear and tear compared to the main rails. This is why the tongue rail is divided into two parts. When the switch is at the end of its life, just replace the switch rail. By doing so, you can reduce the quantity of iron that needs to be replaced after it's worn out. The tongue tracks are operated together using a switching rod. Long back, this switching rod was controlled manually by an operator called Point Man. Nowadays, electric motors do this task upon receiving instruction from an operator. We hope you enjoyed learning all about how railway switching works. See you next time. Thank you.